Three months ago, I purchased the Hypercarbon X, the first carbon fiber mountain bike you can find on shelves at some Walmart stores. I had tempered expectations, but after disassembling the bike and adding a few budget upgrades, it's evolved into what I call Project X. Today, I'm happy to present Project X Stage 2. It's a proof of concept that the Carbon X can become a capable mountain bike. First and foremost, let's talk about the frame. This frame weighs 2 pounds and 13 ounces, and it is carbon fiber. I don't know what the grade is of the carbon fiber, and I've been trying to find out from Hyper Bicycles, but as of yet, I haven't gotten that information. Hyper, I know some of you guys watch these videos, so please, pass along that T rating. Second, I'm not so sure this bike wasn't initially designed to use a 27.5 wheel set and only ended up with 26 to meet a Walmart price point. We'll find out why in a minute. Let's jump right into stage 2 and see what Project X is equipped with. Now all these upgrades will be listed in the description along with links. Let's start up top with the handlebars. These are 760mm Ace Kit Jessicas. These are alloy riser bars I found on Amazon and they're my new favorite bars. I dropped the cheap lock-on grips that came with the bike for some silicone foam grips. Now you'll see that these are Bontrager. I usually use the brand that's in the description but I used the ones that I intended to use on this bike for something else, and I needed something fast, thus the Bontrager. I added a new Shimano SLX shifter to match the rest of the drivetrain that you'll see in just a second. And below that SLX shifter, seeing another Shimano product, and that's Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. This replaced the horrible factory brakes on the Carbon X. One of the few factory components that I kept was the Neko stem. It's forged, lightweight, and puts the new bars right where I want them. And an added bonus is it perfectly frames the ace kit skull. My initial plan was to go with a cheap air fork. I've had good luck with those in the past, but I decided to go a different route here. I chose a RockShox 30 Silver TK. This is a coil fork and it weighs a couple of extra pounds, but there's a reason I chose it. And I'll discuss that in an upcoming video. Here's a look at the calipers on those new Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. You may notice that those rotors are Tektro. And that's because I used a 27.5 wheel set that I looted off my Raleigh Toe Cool. It has Weinman U28 wheels with Kenda Honey Badger tires. Now these are only borrowed for this build, and that's because I have an identical set on the way, though I do think I will keep these Honey Badger tires for the Carbon X. The drivetrain has been completely reworked, and it starts with race face Chester pedals. And those pedals are mounted to Shimano Deore crank arms, which spin a race face 30 tooth chainring. The bottom bracket is a Shimano Holotech, and in the back of the drivetrain, the cassette selected is a 10-speed Shimano SLX 11 to 36 tooth. I caught the cassette and shifter on sale, along with the SLX M675GS derailleur. This derailleur has Shadow Plus technology with a switch to enable or disable the clutch. I did keep the saddle. It would be totally foobar to not stick with something that says snafu. Plus, it's comfortable. At this point in the project, I'm pretty happy with what I've built. It looks like a proper mountain bike. And after three months on this bike, I no longer have a fear that it's going to break in half on every ride. But I do have one looming question, and that is, is going to 27.5 going to change the geometry in a negative way? That is, unless it was made to be 27.5 all along. There's only one way to find out, so it's time to hit the trail with Project X and see if all the components came together to make the ride I intended. It didn't take long on the trail before a few things instantly grabbed my attention. The first of which is the enhanced control with the new 760mm bars. The second is that I can stop now thanks to the loss of those JAK super brakes. Third, I'm convinced that this bike was meant for 27.5 because the new wheel set has unleashed a beast in the Carbon X. It's now fast, very aggressive, and I don't feel some of the flex that I was feeling before when I bite into turns. And on sections of trails that are fast and flowy, Project X will eat them alive. I still wouldn't take this on any trails that have any epic jumps or drops, or any other entry level mountain bike for that matter, but realistically, the few that actually do that won't like anything about a bike in this class anyway. I also noticed how quiet the bike has become. The I'm about to break in half rattles and noises are gone. Let me show you just how much difference there is. Listen to this section of the trail on the original bike.
Now listen to the stage 2 transformation on the same section of the trail at the same speed. I think that qualifies as an amazing transformation. The more I ride my newly upgraded Carbon X, the more familiar it feels. In a lot of ways, this reminds me of my Trek X Caliber 8. It's like having all the things I love about the X-Cal, but adding the one thing the X-Cal doesn't have. My preferred wheel set of 27.5. That's why I took the Carbon X to the Shoals Creek Preserve. That's where I fell in love with my X-Cal and where it excels. So I know this bike should too. Actually, even better. The trails here are all hard-packed, well-maintained, and they lack the roots and ruts that make my normal trail a more technical ride. Sit back, watch a few clips of the Carbon X riding the preserve, and see if you can spot the plethora of spiderwebs that I rode through. Then we'll come back and critique the upgraded Carbon X. Certain bikes that I own are what I call channel bikes, meaning that I don't classify them as mine, they belong to the channel, like the XR Pro. And that's where the Carbon X sat, at least until now, because it has evolved into a bike that I now call one of my favorites. The parts I selected for this build were a balance of performance and cost, but what I did was inadvertently created a bike that's a lot like my XCAL 8, which is an $1,100 bike. And that may be somewhat telling, because that's about what this project would cost if you bought everything new, including the bike. Plus, the warranty on this bike is void the second you start upgrading it. But a direct comparison to local bike shop bikes isn't what this project is about. It is to prove or disprove that this bike can be a successful pay-as-you-go platform if you need a bike to ride but can only afford to upgrade as you go. Or if you just want something unique, to have that one bike that everyone talks about on the trail. It's my opinion that the components on this bike make up a worthy trail bike. The more I ride it, the more confident I feel with it. But that doesn't mean I'm saying someone should buy this bike and build it out. This project was more of a proof of concept. It just so happens that the end result is something that I'll keep riding. Just look at the difference that the new derailleur makes in the derailleur drop test. And note that I dropped the new setup from twice the height. And those of you in the previous video that called out the factory wheel set as being the source of much of the bike's flex, you were apparently right. That's not to say everything about this build is ideal, because the bike still has some heft to be carbon fiber. It still weighs almost 28 pounds, 27.9 to be exact. And there's also the one by drivetrain. They're not for everyone. I like them, but I can tell you that this SLX setup can be a bit slow if there are quick transitions from downhill to a steep quick uphill but I'll cover that in another video. But I've yet to find a bike that's perfect for every situation at any price range. 
As far as Project X as a project, I think it's been a stellar success. And it could get even better with an air fork because that would put the bike at around 25 pounds, which would stack it up against bikes that I think are twice the overall investment. Now it's your turn. Gear up those comments and let me know what you think. Was this build a success? Also, be sure to subscribe and to visit KevCentral.com because I'll soon be announcing the winner of the Kev Central t-shirt. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Spiders. Spiders. <laughs>